Hi there, I'm Evangelist Matthew Lee and welcome to the Weekly Word of Encouragement. Family, today's message has a title and the title is Shifting and Sifting. And I want us to take a look at the Israelites' exodus from Egypt, their process in the wilderness and them going into the promised land. I want us to take a look at the story and then I want to discuss how this applies to us today as Christians and how this even prophetically applies to the church, the body of Christ, where we're at today. So family, the first portion of scripture that I'd like to share with you comes from the book of Exodus and I'm going to be reading from chapter 6 verses 6 to 8 from the New Living Translation and it reads as follows. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. So family, we can see from this portion of scripture that God is telling his people that he is going to shift them from the land of Egypt into the promised land. This is a promise that he is giving to them, that he is going to shift them from work, from a bad situation to a good situation, from slavery into freedom, from being under the Egyptians to being free people in the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. This is the promise of the Lord, and he's saying he will deliver them with signs and wonders. It is a wonderful promise and something that they can be excited about at the end of the day. You know, not everybody is always excited excited about change and all these kinds of things. We're not always excited about shifting from one place to another, from one job to another, whatever it may be. But we must know that when the Lord is shifting us, he is the, He has a reason for it because the Bible says that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose family. And that is what he does. If he's shifting us from one place to another, he's shifting us from good to better. He's shifting us from glory to glory. And that is what he was doing with the Israelites. And he said that he's going to do it with signs and wonders as he does this. And that is exactly what we can read if we look a little bit further down in the book of Exodus. So I'm going to be reading Exodus chapter 12, verse 36 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, the Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites, and they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. Wow, family, isn't that awesome right there? The Lord is telling the Israelites that he is going to shift them from a bad place to a good place. And not just that, but he is going to cause them to leave with the wealth of the Egyptians, to leave with the wealth of their oppressors. So not only are they going to a promised land, but they're going to a promised land rich. They're going to the promised land blessed. And that is what the Lord wanted to do. The Lord wants to make the shifting as easy as possible, because as I said a moment ago, shifting is not always easy. It's not always comfortable, but we must know that when God is shifting us, not when we are shifting ourselves, but when God is shifting us, it is always for the good. It is take, to take us from good to even better, family. It is to take us from glory to glory. That is what the Lord wants to do when he shifts us, family, and the blessings will be there. The provision will be there. However, with shifting, there is also sometimes sifting, and that is exactly what we see in the story of the Israelites is that they were shifted from Egypt to the promised land, but it wasn't something that happened instantaneous. It wasn't something that happened overnight. There was a process that they needed to go through, and that process was the wilderness. Now, scholars believe that the journey from Egypt to the promised land should have taken the Israelites less than two weeks. However, if you go and look at the chronological order of events and stuff in the Bible, you can actually see that it took the Israelites 18 months instead of two weeks to get from the land of Egypt to the Euphrates River, where they were ready to cross over into the promised land. And during this time, they went through a shaping, they went through a shifting, they went through a molding. You see, family, it was in the time in the wilderness that the Lord was revealing himself to the Israelites. He was showing them to be their provider by providing manna and all that kind of thing. He was showing himself to be their guide as he led them by the, the pillar of fire and the, the, the cloud during the day and all these kinds of things. He was showing various aspects of himself to them so that they could put their trust 
in him because they needed to put their trust in him in order to enter into the promised land, in order to take the promised land because the promised land was already being occupied by enemies at the time, but they needed to have faith in God. They needed to have faith that if God says that he has given them this land, even though there's enemies in it, they needed to have the faith to believe that God is faithful to do what he promised. I mean, look at all the wonderful signs that he did to get them out of Egypt. Look at how he transferred the wealth to them. So it was in this time that they were going through a sifting, that, that they were going through a shaping, that they were going through a molding. And once again, these processes are not easy. They are not comfortable for us to go through these things. You know, I always like to use this example, a beautiful piece of jewelry on your hand. Does it just naturally come out the ground like that? No, it comes out of the ground raw and unrefined. And in order for it to get to being a beautiful piece of jewelry on your hand, it needs to go through the fire first to be melted. And once it's gone through the fire, it then goes through some hammering before it can become a beautiful piece of jewelry. And it's the same with us. In order for us to be a beautiful piece of jewelry on God's hand, we need to go through our wilderness. We need to go through a sifting. We need to go through the fire. We need to go through some hammering. And it's not always comfortable, but we must realize that when the Lord is shifting and sifting us, it is for a very good reason, so that he can prepare us, so that he can take us from glory to glory. You see, family, there's there's a lot of purpose in the sifting, and that is that the Lord is preparing us for the next level, for the next blessing. I'm sure you've heard the saying before, new level, new devil. Well, it's true, family. If we want to go to new levels, we need to be prepared for it. We need to be prepared for it, especially in our character. I've heard a lot of people say it, and it is so true. God is more interested in our character than in our comfort. And that is exactly what the sifting process is for. That is exactly what the hammering and the fire and everything is for is to grow our character. You see, family, our character determines our capacity. It determines God's capacity to bless us. So in other words, if we want to receive the blessings of the promised land, our character needs to be in the right place that once we receive those blessings, we will be faithful stewards of those blessings, family. And it is our character and the refinement process that gets us in that place. Because at the end of the day, if our character is not in the right place and we receive receive those blessings, those blessings will become a curse upon our lives because it will cause us to fall into all sorts, all sorts of sin and wickedness and all these kinds of things. But if our character is in the right place, we will have the character, we will have the capacity, we will have the wisdom and everything that we need to take those blessings and to apply the godly principles to those blessings so that we can take the blessings and that they can be multiplied. Because that's what the Word of God says at the end of the day, is when we are faithful stewards, the Lord will multiply it. When we are faithful with little, God will entrust us with more. And that is what the sifting is for, is to prepare us for the greater. It is to prepare us for the blessings. It is to prepare us for greater levels of glory. But we choose how we respond to the sifting process. Will we allow the Lord to sift us? Will we allow the Lord to let us go through the fire? Will we allow the Lord to hammer us a little bit so that we can get there? Or will we be like the Israelites? Because if you've read the story, you know how the story goes. What happens when the Israelites got to the Euphrates River, when they were ready to cross into the promised land after their 18 months of preparation in the wilderness? What happens? And we can pick this up in the book of Numbers chapter 14, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 to 4 from the New Living Translation to start out with, and it reads, Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had have died in Egypt, or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our children will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Family, that's pretty bad right there. The Lord has done a great and miraculous work to shift the Israelites from the land of Egypt to the promised land. They are literally standing on the edge of the promised land. And through the wilderness, through the last 18 months, they've been through a sifting process to prepare them to enter into the promised land. The Lord has done great and mighty signs and wonders to prepare them for this. And they're now standing there ready to go in. The Lord has taken them to this point because he believes that they are ready to cross in. But what do they do, family? 
Instead of saying, yes, the Lord has said we can have this land. Let's go in and take it. They're saying, no, there's there's giants there and there's enemies there. And the Lord has brought us out here to die. Let us rather go back to our comfort zone in Egypt. Let us rather go back to our slavery and all these kinds of things so that we can stay there instead of going into what God has prepared for us. You see, family, in the sifting process in the wilderness, the Israelites had rejected the sifting process. They had rejected what the Lord had done for them. And they were now acting out of fear instead of acting out of faith after everything the Lord had prepared them for in the past 18 months. And the Lord took this very seriously, family. He wanted to wipe them all out. But Moses and Aaron interceded on their behalves. And we can pick this up a little bit later down in Numbers 14. I'm going to be reading verses 20 to 23, and it reads, Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested, but as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen my glorious presence, and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness." But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never even see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. Family, that's a pretty hard judgment right there, but I'm pretty sure you can understand the Lord's frustration at these people. He shifted them out of slavery, out of the land of Egypt with mighty miracles. He sustained them for 18 months in the wilderness, revealing himself to them, helping them to build their faith in him. And now when their faith had the opportunity to be tested, when the time of sifting came, the time to see if they were refined gold or if they were rubbish that was going to be burnt up by the fire at the end of the day, the the time of testing came and they failed the test dismally and the Lord got upset. And he said this to them because they have lack of faith after everything that the Lord has done, because they've been shifted and sifted, but they've not been prepared enough, they will not enter into the promised land. And it's the same with us, family. When we go through a sifting process, but we resist the Lord, we resist the sifting, we resist what the Lord wants to do. We don't have faith in Him to accomplish in us, through us, and for us what He has promised in His Word. We don't have faith that the Lord will give us the land that He's promised us, family. We're going to do exactly Exactly what happened there. We won't enter into the promised land. And what happened, family? The Lord made them wander around in the wilderness for another 40 years so that they could go through an additional sifting. And we're going to pick this up once again in Numbers chapter 14. And I'm going to be reading verses 28 to 33 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Now tell them this, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. You will all drop dead in this wilderness because you complained against me. Every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb and Joshua. You said your children would be carried off as plunder. Well, I will bring them safely into the land and they will enjoy what you have despised. But as for you, you will drop dead in this wilderness and your children will be like shepherds wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. In this way, they will pay for your faithlessness until the last one of you lies dead in the wilderness. Family, that portion of scripture is even more rough than the previous one. But what does it start out by saying there? And this is a crucial portion of scripture, Numbers 14, 28. Now tell them this, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Family, when you go through your shifting, when you go through your sifting, what is coming out your mouth? What is coming out your mouth determines what is in your heart. And what is in your heart is determined by your level of faith and all these kinds of things. So when you're going through the sifting, are you moaning? Are you whining? Are you complaining? When you're being shifted from one place to another, are you moaning, whining, or complaining? Are you saying, yes, 
Thank you, Lord, for this shifting. Thank you, Lord, for the sifting. Thank you, Lord, for this preparation period that you are preparing me for more, that you are preparing me for greater, that you are preparing my character and growing me so that you can entrust me with more, that you can entrust me with your promised land. How are you responding to the shifting and the sifting that is going on in your lives will determine the outcome because the Lord says that he will do to you the very things that he heard you say. So is your confession a positive one or is it a negative one? Is your attitude positive or is it negative? The Bible says that life and death lie in the power of the tongue. We need to choose our words carefully, how we respond to the shifting and the sifting so that we can choose right, that we can confess right, that we don't have to go around the mountain again, that we don't have to spend another 40 years like the Israelites did in the wilderness going through additional sifting. Because what was he doing now? He was, shift, he was sifting the faithless people out of Israel so that the faithful people could enter into the promised land. In other words, the next generation family. Let us not allow the blessings that God wants to give to us be passed on to the next generation because of our faithlessness. Let us rather be faith-filled and enter into and walk in the fullness of the promised land that the Lord has for us, the fullness of the abundant life. You see, family, in the Old Testament, the Lord promised the Israelites a promised land. However, in the New Testament, under the new covenant, after everything that Jesus did, we now have a land filled with promises. And that is the land filled with promises, all the promises that are available to us in the word of God. Because the Bible says that the promises of the Lord are yes and amen, family. They are available to us, but we cannot access them unless we've gone through the shifting, unless we've gone through the sifting, unless we've gone through the preparation. Because even if we apply the principles to unlock the promises, we will not receive them if our character is in the wrong place. Because if our character is in the wrong place, as I said earlier, the blessing will become a curse because the, the blessing will cause us to fall and stumble in life. And that's not what God wants for us because he's a good and loving father at the end of the day. And he wants what's only best for us. And a good father will never give their child something that they know is inevitably going to hurt them, family. So we determine when we step into the promised land, we determine when we walk in the fullness of the blessings that God wants us to. We determine when we walk in the fullness of the call that he's placed upon our lives when we allow the Lord to sift us, when we allow the Lord to shift us, when we allow him to mold us, when we allow him to put us through the fire, when we allow him to hammer us and do whatever he needs to do. But we must know at the end of the day that God is working everything, even your pain, even your struggles, even your sifting together for good so that you can become the person that he's created you to be, to do the things that he's called you to do, to live the blessed, prosperous, and abundant life that he wants you to live. And how can we pick up the story? How does the story end at the end of the day? We can read about this in Joshua chapter 1, where the last sifting happened, where or the last of the previous generation, the faithless generation, died off. And there was now only Joshua and Caleb and an entire generation of Israelites that were faith-filled and ready to take the promised land. So I'm going to be reading from the book of Joshua chapter 1, verses 2 to 3 from the New Living Translation, and it reads, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. Family, that scripture starts off pretty bad by saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. But what is that saying? It's saying the previous faithless generation has, is now dead. The sifting process has been complete. You are now ready. As they were when they were at the Euphrates River the first time, they're now facing the same thing again. Joshua can now choose. How does he react? Does he react how he reacted 40 years ago? and say, yes, we can take this land? Or does he say, oh, Lord, you know, it's been 40 years. I, I'm, a, I'm a bit old for this now. You know, may, maybe some of these other guys can go or, you know, maybe maybe we can just stay here, you know, in the wilderness. It's, it's okay. We, we, we're okay with the manna. And no, Joshua continued as he did 40 years ago to step out in faith, 
now that the sifting had been completed, now that he, as well as the rest of the generation that was with him, they were ready to enter into this promised land and they were going to take the land by force. And if you go and read further on in the Bible, that is exactly what they did. The Lord was with them and gave them victory after victory after victory. Why? Because they had faith in God. They had faith in his promises. They were being led and guided by God, equipped and empowered by God. They were ready. They had gone through the sifting. They had gone through the fire. They had gone through the wilderness. They had gone through the molding and the hammering and everything. And they were beautiful pieces of jewelry on God's hand, ready to do what he wanted them to do. And that was to take the promised land. And this is where we need to get family. We need to go through the shifting. We need to go through the sifting in order that we can get to this place where we can go and take the promised land by force. That everywhere we set our foot, that is land that the Lord has already given to us. That's a beautiful promise right there, family. But we have to go through the shifting. We have to go through the sifting. And the more we embrace the process, the faster we get through it, the faster we allow the Lord to accomplish in us what he wants to, the sooner we can get around the promised land, get to the promised land. But if we go through the, the sifting and we're not ready, we're going to walk around the mountain again. And if we go through more sifting and we fail the test again, we're going to go around the mountain again and again and again and again and again until we are ready to pass the test. And sometimes the tests get harder and harder. And the reason for that is the Lord is breaking us that we will get to the end of ourselves and realize that we cannot do it in our own strength. We can only do it with the Lord because the Bible says that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So family, when we are going through some shifting, when we are going through some sifting, know that the Lord is preparing us for greater, that he is busy working all things together for our good, and that he is preparing us for the season ahead. And I believe that there is also a great shifting and a great sifting that is currently going on individually within all of us to prepare us for greater, but also for the body of Christ as a whole. These last couple of years with COVID, there's been a great sifting in the body of Christ. Many have fallen away, but many new believers have also come to the Lord. The Lord is sifting out the, the chaff from the wheat. He's sifting out the old lukewarm Christians and bringing in new on fire Christians who are ready to embrace and do what God has called them to do in these end times that we find ourselves in, family. The, there's a great sifting that's going on, and the Lord is separating the chaff from the wheat at the end of the day. He is separating the 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 pure gold from the rubbish of all the other minerals and stuff that's around it. He is ref- finding the body of Christ. And I've, and we've seen, my wife and I have both seen this prophetically and we've spoken to other prophetic individuals as well who have confirmed this, that there is a shifting in the body of Christ. There is a sifting. God is preparing us for something great. And the scripture that the Lord gave me for this year was the one that says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has perceived the things that God has prepared for those who love him. There is a shifting for these things that have never been seen never been heard, never been perceived. There is a shifting happening for that. And at the same time, there is a sifting going on in the body of Christ. And you choose by your own sifting process, as well as this general sifting process, whether you are wheat or whether you're a chaff, whether you're a gold or whether you're the other rubbish minerals that get discarded at the end of the day, I want to encourage you through the sifting process, be on the right side of the sift so that you can be part of this end time revival, that you can be part of what the Lord is busy doing and accomplishing in and through and for the body of Christ. But the choice is yours, family. Will you be like the Israelites and go around the mountain for 40 years? Or will you embrace the process, embrace the sifting, end up on the right side of the sifting so that the Lord can use you mightily to accomplish his purpose through you so that he can take you from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and from victory to victory to allow you to live the blessed, prosperous, abundant, and successful life that he wants you to live. The choice is yours. I encourage you to choose life. Thank you, family. I hope this message has blessed you and encouraged you and given you some food for thought. And before I end, I'd just like to close in prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this day, that this is the day that you've made, and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for your word and the advice in your word, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the testimony of everything that the Israelites went through. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the shifting and the sifting that they went through, and that we can learn a lesson from this, Lord. Help us, Lord, to embrace the shifting and the sifting that you are bringing about in our lives, Lord, to embrace it head on so that we can get through the process quickly, Lord, so that when we come to the the river, Lord, to cross over into the promised land, that we are ready the 
first time that we don't have to keep going on and around and around and around the mountains. Lord, help us to make the right decision. Help us to pursue you and pursue your path and your will for our lives, Lord, so that we can be the people you've created us to be, do the things that you've called us to do and live the lives, the blessed, prosperous, and abundant lives that you want us to live, Lord. Help us, Lord, to prepare us to step into the promised land, the land of promises, Lord, all the promises of your word, Lord, so that we can live the life that you want us to live. And we give you alone all the praise, the glory, and the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching my video. I trust that the content of the message blessed you and encouraged you. And if it did, I'd like to ask you to please hit the share button to help us spread this message and to get it out there to your friends and family so that they too may be blessed by this message. And before you leave, please remember to give this video a thumbs up Drop a comment, let me know what you think about the content of this message. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, I'd like to invite you to please head over to the Evangelist Matthew Lee Facebook page or YouTube channel where you'll find many videos similar to this that I've created to bless you and encourage you from the Word of God. If you watched this message today and were touched by this message and feel like you want to give your heart to the Lord and make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love to invite you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says salvation. And if you watch this message and were blessed by this message and feel led to sow a seed into the ministry or to partner with us on a monthly basis, I'd like to ask you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says giving. Alternatively, at the bottom of the screen right now is the ministry's banking details as well as our Snapchat QR code. And lastly, I'd just like to ask you to please go and like, follow and subscribe to all my social media accounts if you haven't already to be kept up to date and in the loop with everything that's happening in the ministry and every time we upload a video just like this one. Thank you, family. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless.